Welcome to PTC Express Video Tip of the Month. My name is Leo Green. Thanks for watching. When you hear the phrase spinal bend, you might think of a chiropractic procedure of some kind. Hopefully after today, you'll see the spinal bend feature in a whole new light. This powerful and robust advanced feature has been around for many years, but is largely overlooked. Today I'll be highlighting two different use cases for the spinal bend feature. One, to create advanced complex geometry which is the use case that it was created for in the first place, and in the second, a more utilitarian use, as it applies to creating flexibility for a part. Here you see what might be a turbo scroll. That would be one of the most important aspects of any sort of turbo machinery. The shape of this turbo scroll is just as important to the performance of the turbine than the turbine blade profiles themselves. How to create such complex geometry? Well, the Spinal bend makes it easy. Let's apply this spinal bend right now. First of all, you'll notice that I've got some sort of tapered object and what might be the outside radius of the turbine wheel. Perhaps with some clearance, perhaps not. That would be your choice. This will be the spine that we're going to bend this object around. We'll insert advanced spinal bend two options selected the spine or sketching the spine that's pretty much straightforward well in this case we'll select it and no property control or we'd like to include in this case section property control the section property control can be both linear or function as a graph in this case we'll just allow the section properties to vary in a linear fashion. First question is what object would you like to bend? I can pick a solid or a quilt. Since I've already got the spine already created, I'm just going to select it and I'll use curve chain to pick all. Notice it guesses for the start point. So I'll make sure that my start point is at my turbine scroll inlet. Since I asked for section property control, I need to put a sketcher coordinate system in my section for the very beginning. Now the section properties can be wide and varied. You'll notice here that an example, a very simple example, would be to vary the section properties as a function of area along the spine. But you'll see also that we can include centroids, moment of inertias, and so on. ProEngineer has placed a plane through the start point normal to the spine and is now asking how much of this body do I want to bend around the spine. I'll make a plane that is through the very back here because I want it all. And that's it. That's taken this tapered body bent it around the spine in such a way that the cross-sectional area varies linearly. Very complex and very easy to do. People who do this kind of work love this feature. Now, what if you don't do turbo scrolls or other cross-sectional area propagating sensitive geometry? Well, here's another example for a spinal bend that you could use almost every day. What you'll see here is a simple model. This is a zip tie. Now, you might use this zip tie over and over again in an assembly to wrap something or to hold hoses or what have you. But you don't want to model it over and over again. And what's more is if you have it on a drawing, you don't want it to change every time you apply it in a new assembly. Let's now apply some flexibility to this zip tie. You can turn on the planes, pick a plane, make a, cur a curve that's sketched right here such that I'll use this edge here as a reference. Right click for a line, I'll just drop a line down a bit. Right click for a three point arc, we'll just come out, come around, and then one more line coming straight across. 
fix up the dimensioning scheme, let's make this horizontal. And I'd like to also dimension this line to be offset from here, because I want some clearance as it bends around. 0.01 is fine. So, I've got a curve that I want to bend this twist tie around. That's easy enough. But the question now becomes, how long does this line need to be? Well, watch this. If I fly out my dimension, there's a funny box here. This is what's called the perimeter dimension, where I can pick a combination of curves. Holding the control key down, I'll pick the rest of them. Middle mouse, it's going to ask, which dimension do I want to be driven? Well, it's the length here. And I want it to be driven by a perimeter of 8, which is the length of the zip tie. So now, if I modify this radius, you'll see that the length of the curve updates, always giving me the exact right length. We'll call that curve done. This now will be the spine that I'm going to use for my spinal bend. Insert, advanced, spinal bend. In this case, we're going to select the spine, no property control, pick the solid to bend, curve chain, Pick the curve, select all, start point is good, and now it created a plane through the start point normal to the curve and is asking me now how much of this object do I want to bend. I want to bend it all. So parallel to this plane and through right here, this point here. Call that done. And there's my zip die. Bent such that if I change this radius, if I modify this radius, maybe make that 0.5, exactly as I'd like it to be. So I now set up flexibility, file, properties, and ask for the flexibility to be defined by that number. So I can use a measurement for my flexibility to apply in my assembly. In addition, I may want to include features. Because this curve and this spinal bend ought to be included in the flexibility. In that way, when I suppress them here, they'll show up only at the assembly level. Well, there you go. Spinal bend to be used to create flexibility as well as complex geometry. I hope a little of this made sense to you, and I hope you'll be able to use more advanced features expanding your horizons with Pro Engineer Wildfire. Again, my name is Leo Green, and thanks for watching. Have a great day.